Today, I, I wanted to spend some time uh, talking uh, just a bit about the multiverse of, of product management. I'll start with a bit of introduction of, of who I am, but really just uh, want to leave it to you to kind of, you know, talk about, uh, ask me any questions that you have, either related to what I'm going to uh, talk about or not. So just in, in terms of first, uh, hi, I'm Nira Schwartzlevy. I work at Best Buy as a senior director of product management. We have our booth operating uh, all through the product fair today. So I highly recommend uh, paying that a visit and asking all the questions. We have an awesome team there as well of uh, recruiters and leaders that would answer any product management question, Best Buy question you have. So in terms of the conversation today, so what to expect? So. The presentation today is really about just my two cents to you, uh, a collection of my observations, best practices, and my lesson learned. It's based on my experience in product management across uh, B2Bs and B2Cs for startups and corporates. Uh, it's really, um, again, want to spend a lot of time with the questions you have and what you want to know. And I'm really hoping it's going to be a fun, interactive, and valuable uh, experience. And uh, just in terms of, of setting expectation, this is not any, it's not scientific, it's not a guarantee. Uh, this material is not representing my, my current employer and it wouldn't really work as a, as a standalone. So uh, before that, maybe just a bit of uh, introduction on my career journey. And so I started my career uh, in the Israel Defense Force. I was an officer um, responsible for 200 soldiers. And uh, after my two year military service, I went and uh, started my bachelor's, a double major in computer science and management in Tel Aviv University, which you can see here. Uh, it's a really pretty campus actually. Uh, within that time that I was doing my double major, I was working for really small startups. Uh, five to 10 people as a full stack developer. And like any startup, I was doing the product and the QA and the marketing and the UX, uh, very much like you have with only 10 or five people in a startup. I also worked for blue chip companies, uh, corporates like McAfee and Microsoft, um, and even Adobe as an internship as a product marketing manager. Uh, I went to MIT uh, to get my MBA. Uh, and this is kind of the picture from my graduation, which was uh, amazing two years, highly recommend it. And then uh, after graduation from MIT, I joined the Walt Disney Company. I was there for six years and done multiple leadership roles across uh, product technology and innovation. Um, I've managed directly program engineering and product, uh, was able to do develop ideas from scratch all the way to a product and then extending it to a platform with multiple products uh, and as well overseeing uh, portfolios, existing portfolio of, of products. And recently I've moved to uh, the awesome company, which is Best Buy. The picture here is uh, just something I got uh, this past week. It's a recognition winter package from Best Buy and have had an amazing time uh, so far being the senior director uh, of product for consumer apps and mobile platforms. So just to summarize, uh, I have 14 plus years of leadership uh, experience across product technology and innovation, across startups, across corporates that I've mentioned, I have more than 10 years of building and directly managing uh, high performing cross-functional teams, uh, product engineering and program uh, reporting directly to me. And I have 11 or more than 11 years of launching and delivering uh, from inception, both enterprise and consumer facing products. Uh, just full disclosure, some of those years are actually higher than what's written here, but it made me feel old. So <laughs> I put those in here. Uh, I put the plus there. So um, before we get into the topic, uh, th I really wanted to make this time, our time together uh, valuable. And I know that we have a mix here in product fair of you know uh, professionals that are early uh, in their product management journey, they're mid uh, their product manager journey, or they're advanced. And I really wanted something that would help uh, regardless of which step of the product management career or your career in general you're on. And so uh, I started thinking as I'm doing uh, mentoring and helping others with career advice and, and uh, product uh, mentorship as well, uh, I get a question often about product management roles, 
and what they mean. We actually even had one uh, question like that in the booth today of what is the progress of the product management roles? What are the different roles that are out there and what did they mean? And so uh, thought about starting with just a evolution of product management um, and how it came to be all the way to today and, and what's, what's happening today. So to start with the history a bit, um, at the 30s, uh, it's actually 1931, is where the version zero of product management that got created by Procter & Gamble's uh, president. Uh, their role was not titled product management, it was titled brand man, and it was mostly uh, in consumer goods and manufacturing, Procter & Gamble, Toyota, and the focus of that role was about the building of a brand that is based on the customer needs. So already there's the introduction of focusing on customer needs, as we know in, in product management today. Then in the 1940s is where Howlett and Parker, Packard from HP took a different kind of evolution to that brand man. Actually, one of them was a brand man uh, himself under the mentorship of uh, Procter & Gamble's uh, president. And so they evolved it into putting the decision-making as close as possible to the customer and made it focus on making products, services, and brands that are relative to the customer and what would sell to the customer. So they were very focused on what would sell and separating the product role from the brand man uh, role that was there before. From there, on the 60s and 70s, is where customer behavior and customer choices uh, customers themselves became more uh, picky and, and more severe and more sophisticated in choosing brands. There were so many of them to choose that they started having more of a tendency to choose one brand over the other to differentiate between good brands and bad brands. And so this is where kind of the, the product management role uh, which was still mostly in consumer goods and manufacturing, started focusing more on pricing, packaging, promotions, marketing. So you can think about it as today's marketing manager, basically. And then in the 80s is where product management was first introduced uh, to the tech world. And the first company that was pioneering that was Intuit. Uh, and the uh, founders of Intuit basically took the brand management role, which was the early version of a product role, and applied it, were the first one that uh, applied it to their software products. And with that, the role evolved into understanding the customers, their needs, aligning that with the product development cycle. So basically taking a bit more step farther away from the brand role as we know it today, and bring it closer to product development also from the realization that there needs to be uh, more help within the compli how complicated uh, production and production cycles were, and the fact that engineers can't do all of the building it, plus the planning for it, plus thinking about a roadmap is where this ev uh, evolution came from. And so in the 90s and the 2000s is where more tech companies, including Microsoft and others, started following in into its uh, footsteps and adopted uh, both the consumer product management role as a separate role and also became more uh, customer centric in their thinking about their products. Also because at that point, there was brand new products that got created without a lot of competition uh, to them. And so that was a shift for that how we know the PM role today, which focuses on product development, customer obsession, translation of requirements, collaborating with development teams, and basically have the product manager be there for every step of the product cycle to advocate for the end users and making sure that what is delivered really answers the need of the customer and bring that value that was envisioned for the customer. And so, with that history, and I know it was a bit, a bit a lot, but with that history, what is happening today? What happens from the 2000 all the way to today, especially in the last, I would say, 10 or so years? So uh, I used to think, and I know a lot of kind of uh, conversations that I have where 
it seems like there is a natural progression to pro product management role titles. So like every uh, other title there or other uh, function or profession there, you start from the entry level, which is associate product management, all the way to a product manager or senior product manager, to then a management of product management or senior management, to a director, senior director, to VP, SVP, and then chief product officer. That seems like a very common kind of way of progression uh, from a product management. The thing is, is that in the last few years, uh, things, especially from product management job titles, look a bit different, uh, not exactly straightforward as, as the picture in here. And so with that, it is uh, time for a small quiz that I would love your help with, uh, if you can answer in the chat. How many product management job titles exist today? So if you can uh, give your guest within the chat, um, I'll give kind of a few seconds to answer. It could be 15, 20, 25, or 30 plus. What do you think? Let's see the guesses. Okay. Just gonna scroll over to see, I'm seeing Guess is coming in. That's great. Yeah, 30, 30. I see Jatin, I see Arun, I see Pooja. Awesome. Okay. So, give it a few more, and then I'll reveal the answer. <laughs> okay. So, the answer is more than 30. There's more than 30 product management job titles that exist today. And with that, you could think about there's, for example, the product management specialist, the product management analyst, product owner, product strategist, product generalist, product lead, technical product manager, and so many more titles that are all part of the product management uh, functions. Some of them are overlapping. Some of them are pieces from the end-to-end -end product management role. Um, and so that could be very confusing. And that is the question I mentioned. I just mentored someone someone uh, this past weekend that asked me that same question. I'm, I want to be in product management. I'm seeing, in this case, a product strategist role. What does that mean? And what do I do? And so the question is, is with understanding that right now product management and the titles within and roles within it are not linear, they're much more uh, complex and much more <laughs> diverse than kind of the linear transaction. Uh, the question is, is how do we know, right? Like how do we get to a place where we understand how the day-to-day -day looks like, we understand what's the career path there, and we understand if this is something that helps us from the skills that we want to acquire for the job after this next job. And so uh, with that, I kind of, yeah, I have my two cents and, and things from my experience that I've advised others as well of what to look for. When we look for that next exciting opportunity in product management and we look at the job description or we have interviews or, or talking with the recruiter asking about the job, what are some things to look for to understand really what's, what's the day-to-day -day gonna look like? And so the first one is role and intake. Um, so from the role perspective, make sure you take the time to really carefully read the roles and responsibilities, and I'll, I'll go over some examples in the next slide. Look for key defining words. There's a, a difference, for example, if the words are influence as opposed to create a product strategy, influence a product strategy. There is a, a difference if we say, help prioritization or support prioritization by providing research as opposed to own the roadmap and prioritization. Those would mean very different day-to-days and diff very different roles, even if titles could be different or similar. Uh, understanding which part of the product intake this role is accountable for. Is it the start of the product intake where you set a vision, a strategy, uh, build a roadmap? 
Is it the end where it's working with the team of engineers to then deliver and maybe track KPIs? Or is it the end to end? Is it internally facing? Again, kind of more of working with the stakeholders and the teams, or is it externally facing working with the customers? Um, for example, there's some uh, companies that would have two product roles, one a product manager and one a product owner, where the product manager will do the start, the external facing and the start of the intake that is customer relationship, management of uh, stakeholders, building a roadmap, and kind of getting that vision set. But then they hand off to a product owner that works with the teams mostly on the delivery and tracking the KPIs. And so that's an example of kind of the, the start and the end and two different titles that both of them are considered product management. Uh, the other question that uh, I would recommend um, asking is, what is the role's decision power? Is this role influencer in some ways, but creator and decision maker in some ways? Understanding the role's decision-making power would help you understand what would be your day-to-day, -day, what skills you're going to get, how this how this role is going to uh, actually manifest within within um, what you do. And so that's that's another good uh, question to ask. The other question is how many product roles are participating in the product intake? And in my experience, the more product roles that are participating in the intake of ideation, analysis, delivery, and then the analytics, the more roles that you have there, the smaller the scope and decision power for each one of the roles in it. If the, if the only product role uh, in this kind of team or uh, on that product is the product manager, it's probably closer that that would be an end-to-end -end product manager that does all the way from ideation to the delivery and tracking of the of the KPIs. And so that's that's important to know uh, from that pie how many slices there are because that's going to define again the day-to-day -day and the and the scope. The other thing to look at is the size of the company uh, that this role is at. Is it a startup? Is it a corporate? Having experience in both. A product management role within a startup is very different. The day-to-day, -day, even though it's the same title, would be very different from a product management day-to-day uh, -day within a corporate that has, let's just say, it, for comparison, more than 100,000 uh, uh, people. Um, and so from that perspective on a startup, it's a small team. The day-to-day -day is more focused on getting very quickly, getting the feedback getting that feedback into uh, values and the needs and working with the team to put that to, to the product and have a really quick iteration to get that startup up and running. Uh, not a lot of processes, not a lot of need for um, you know, collaboration and, and coordination. Whereas in a big corporate, there's more of your day-to-day -day that might go into the relationship, the coordination, because there's so much more teams that are a part of getting a feature out to the customer or getting a product out to the customer. And so it does change your day-to-day -day between those two different company sizes. And it does give you different skills, even though both of them could be the exact same title, product manager. Uh, the other thing to, to consider is team size and where the maturity is. Is the team and the product in its inception uh, or it's a mature product that already has users out there and just needs kind of more of that enhancement and growth? Uh, it's very different, the product management focus and roles between the two. Is, it, is this role of product going to be dedicated to one team or multiple teams. That's also going to change how your time every day is going to be divided within the role. And then is it the first product role of that team or of that product? If it is, then that means that there needs to be some investment upfront in educating about what product management is, 
what's the best practices, establishing kind of the, the intake and the product processes that are not, not necessarily there because it's the first product role. Uh, and how many of those already exist? And that, again, points to, to the maturity. And then the last thing is culture. Uh, this is an important one from the fact that the culture of the team and the company also impacts how much of the product responsibilities you do more or less of. So, for example, a question that I like uh, to ask when I get interviewed is, is the company or is the org that this role is under is product led or engineering led uh, i can share with you that in uh, my experience for example my previous experience uh, at disney 10 something years ago uh, they were still on the journey and some of the teams there uh, which is not true today but some of the teams there were more engineering led they were they did not know what the product management discipline and role is and how it fits within delivering value and shipping products and so there was so much of the education and the buy-in uh, and the creation of the product framework and practices and, and meetings and whatnot uh, that i had to do as opposed to if coming to a place where the product um the product it's a product led and it's already mature then you're more uh, your day to day is more about working new ways to innovate within existing frameworks it's about really thinking strategically about what next as opposed to needing to build the foundation I, the analogy would be you're you're busy in the interior design of the house <laughs> and the living room as opposed to being busy in putting the plumbing and the foundations for the house and that's very different um and so that's that's one question to ask the other question to ask is very much on the um kind of the the waterfall or agile or how i like to call some companies are doing wedgile which is waterfall uh in disguise <laughs> it's waterfall in disguise of of basically agile waterfall in disguise because they're not they're not really doing agile they're doing small waterfall cycles um and so it's important to know because again if it's a waterfall product management role would be very much different than in an agile where it's quick iteration versus waterfall where there's a lot of planning uh, up front and only after all the planning and validation is where you actually get to to uh, ship a product or a value whereas agile is focused on more of the iteration of small pieces and getting feedback super quickly to build more and more um based on customer feedback that's direct as opposed to imagining something all the way start to end and only then shipping it and so that's important uh for what the day-to-day -day looks like for that role and then uh where the company is in their product journey and technology transformation and that's i've already kind of touched on that with the first question uh this is important on again are they just getting introduced into product management are they just in the beginning of their technology transformation or they're already very mature or they're one of the companies or teams that actually creates new product frameworks that other companies adopt that is very different in terms of the skill set that you need and the skill set and experience that you need to be successful at the role and very different from the skills and the day-to-day -day, uh, for that role as well um, so a few things to think about more than happy to answer questions and, and chat after, uh, but wanted to give some, some examples um, of, of some of those things to, to look for. So the first example is a uh, actual posted role, uh, doesn't matter the, the company, that is a product strategist role. Um, and so if you look at this role and you start reading it, not really knowing maybe what a product strategist is, you look at the team's mission is to drive strategic decisions that produce long-term growth. Okay, that's very much product management. It could be a product manager, owner. Um, and then work closely with product leaders. That's where we're kind of, I mentioned, looking for key roles, uh, key words that are defining for the role. So work closely with product leaders. That might mean that you're not a product leader within this role. It's a different one not good or bad just different 
And then the other uh, word here and cross-functional teams to influence product strategy decisions. So again, there's a difference between creating product strategy and influencing product strategy. And then if you continue reading on, this is where it gets to where I would guess this product uh, role really is, is providing the research and analysis on the trends, the customer behavior and so forth. So this is really a product research role as I would rename it, that is all the way in the beginning of collecting customer needs, working with product managers, as opposed to this being a product manager role, which is, which is not. Uh, based on how I'm seeing and reading this. The other uh, example here, product specialist uh, in a product management role. If you read through it, and I'm not going to read through all of it, but it says in the beginning, interacting with the different functions, sales, product development, business operation, that's, that's a product management uh, operate, like product management responsibility, but it's also a product owner responsibility and a product designer responsibility. So continuing reading on, creating, creating innovative market and product requirements. Okay, so here we're getting into this role owns creating the requirements. Development and execution of the product roadmap. This role owns that. Development of the strategy. So that means this is a product manager role that is in this, the start, that uh, first two phases of the of the intake where you set strategy, you set direction, you do the ideation and some of the analysis. Uh, less about maybe what some companies are calling the product owner, which is mostly then working, taking that and working with the engineering teams. And then um, as I started kind of touching on that, there's different, different titles that sometimes mean the same thing in different companies. And so some examples for that is group, Group product manager, principal product manager, manager of product management could all be the exact same responsibilities day to day. They're just called different uh, titles and different names in different companies and sometimes in different teams within the same company. Um, and just a, a side uh, story, uh, when I just started uh, at Disney, uh, because again, they were not where they are today, but they were in the beginning of their uh, product and technology transformation. Uh, their product management were called producers. And so where, when I was asking, hey, can I talk with the product manager of this, of this product? I was told, oh yeah, go and talk with that producer. And I'm like, I don't want a producer for the, for the movie. I need a product person. <laughs> and so I, I came to realize that that was just the, the title. Same thing for product owner, product specialist, product analyst, business analyst, Definitely seen cases where all of them are just, it's the same role. It's the same day to day, just called differently. And so uh, within that, what are the key takeaways? Uh, because I do want to make sure we have, we have some time uh, for you as well. So the key takeaways is that the world of product management has evolved a lot and it's getting more complex and it's very organ or organic as opposed to being formalized. And without a formal uh, standards and a common and formal training, a lot of companies have been inventing their own product management roles, rules and frameworks and titles of, as you've seen. And so understanding when you look for that next role, understanding the skills you have, the skill you need to acquire, what are you excited to do every day? What are the activities and responsibilities that are gonna get you excited to come to work Monday morning uh, is, really important to understand and then look for that within take the time and look for that within the role in the context of what we talked about the company size the culture the product maturity uh asking questions like how the day-to-day -day looks like behind that title ask to understand a high level of the product job family and what's the career path for that talking with people that are in the same role in the same company, I have the same title, uh, in the same team if possible, would give you a really good understanding of where they're at in the intake and what their responsibilities and what skills they have and what skills they need to use for uh, being successful at their job. And so uh, with that, hopefully this was super, uh, this was valuable and helpful for you. Um, and I would love to 
pause now and take time for any questions that I can help with and I'll, I'll stop the sharing. Thank you, Nick. That's an awesome question. So I'll just read that. What made me decide to join Best Buy after all the other companies I worked at? Uh, good question. Great question. I would say in my mind, uh, after working uh, in pure tech, then working in Disney, which is entertainment, the I get very much excited about understanding different industries where some of my skills are transferable and some things I have to learn brand new. Uh, specifically for Best Buy, I was very attracted to a few things. Um, and I was, to be honest, wasn't looking for a job, but Best Buy's uh, offer was, uh, you know, from what, what I saw was so attractive in the sense that people, first the people. So from a Best Buy perspective, if you look at companies that are on the scale between uh, putting more weight on individual contribution to companies that are value value deep relationship and has a lot of like decision by consensus and uh, value more of the relationship sometimes also in the expense of, of results, Best Buy is somewhere in the middle closer to the relationship. And I think uh, a match between a person and the culture that they work at really makes a difference on how influential they could be and how successful they can be. For me personally, I'm a deep relationship person. And so Best Buy being a very deep relationship, relationship driven company, uh, this is where I got very excited uh, from that perspective. The other thing is, is Best Buy is also a company in an awesome transformation an acceleration of that technology transformation. So I was excited about being part of that and really being able to make an impact in an environment that is transforming, where it's not just about enhancing something that's already working and established, but being part of a whole new kind of like uh, up leveling to the next step, rebuilding stuff, so much innovation that's happening in, uh, in the name of searching for that transformation, so much hunger for, for innovation within Best Buy that you know, for me, it was the, the perfect opportunity where I can really push and, and move the needle as opposed to maybe uh, overseeing something that's already already established. And so uh, those are some of the, there's a lot of reasons, but those are some of the key uh, reasons. And I would say understanding Best Buy's three core pillars, those are not changing year by year, that are about customer obsession, digital first, and then being human, that spoke to me. That I could relate with that. It's something that I wanted to be a part of. And so that's that's the reason. Um, those are the key reasons. Where we can, okay, I see the other question from Nick. Where can we publicly see your magic touch on Best Buy's product? Uh, so I would say I've been... If you look at, at the things that Best Buy have done, and I'll just full disclosure, I've joined about seven months ago. Um, you could see that in the recent innovations that we have had, and there's much more coming. So for example, uh, we have our uh, AR glasses try on. So if you go to the app, you can try on the Bose uh, sunglasses. And we did also a partnership with the Ray-Ban Facebook uh, glasses, where you could kind of see how that looks. And, and there's more of these that we're definitely trying and innovating. Uh, mobile self-checkout is another thing that exists in some of our stores where you can just use the app to be uh, to self-checkout and you don't need to wait in line to do that. And so we are definitely uh, actively thinking there's a roadmap of more exciting things to come. Uh, but those are a few things that I would mention um, that have kind of, you know, my my touch or my team, I would say my my team's touch uh, and Best Buy touch uh, that you can see on the app. Hope that answered your your two questions, Nick. <laughs> Tell me if not, I'm more than happy to to clarify. Uh, okay, we have Elon. Do you have any tips for spotting job offer from companies that have a great org structure? That's a good question. I would say the best, the best, the things that I've done to understand the culture is 
trying to un to talk with uh, people that work there, but also work with people that used to work there. Um, I think that there is, you know, when you talk with people that both the mix of people that work there and used to work there, you get the real kind of perception on how the, the culture is. I also use some of the some of the questions uh, that I've mentioned uh, before to understand a bit more about the culture. Um, so, for example, I'm asking about uh, how are decisions being made? Uh, what what how what activities the team is doing for for bonding? Uh, what opportunities for growth are there? And then I look at uh, also videos. Um, I like to look at, this is my personal thing, I like to look at videos from uh, the leaders, the CEOs, or the leaders of that org for the role that I'm thinking. Because in my mind, uh, leadership casts a shadow in their actions and in their talks that really influences the culture. And so I like to see that as well, those videos as a way to understand better about the culture. Okay, Chandler is asking, if you were breaking into product management role for the first time, coming from SaaS sales and non-technical background, what job titles industries would you go after? I would say this is a harder one to answer, Chandler, just because it's really depends on your specific kind of background, what you've been doing. Um, I would say that there's entry level uh, roles that could lead into product uh, management. Uh, business analyst, uh, product owner is one. I would look for uh, companies that basically are are looking for a good mix of, of junior talent and senior talent. So probably in products where the product owner role or the business analyst role is a bit like smaller in scope, I would say. Um, I would say another another industry, I would, I would look at traditional industries, um, I would say. Um, I would look at tech industries too, but maybe starting with uh, traditional industries might be a good start but again as i said without understanding very much of, of your specific background it's a bit harder to answer that but usually usually the business analyst the product owner some traditional so traditional um companies that are trying to get more into product management also can can be a good way uh, or a place to look for um okay so another one from from Nick, um, and thank you, Deepika, for and Elon for uh, for your comments. Can Best Buy help other companies do mobile self checkout, especially grocery stores? <laughs> uh, well, I would say we are willing to help anyone and everyone, but we want to make sure that we're helping we're helping our customers first. Uh, not sure that I have a good answers for that, but I would love for you to, you know, try the mobile self checkout. Give us all the feedback. Like that, that is, we're building for you. We're building for our customers. We're not building for ourselves. And so, uh, check out the experience. Let me know. <laughs> okay, what is your opinion on starting an implementation specialist or customer success as a means to break into product management. I would say those could be a good uh, entry point. Again, implementation specialist, customer success. Look at the day to day, understand the skills that you're going to have from that role. And are those transferable when you look at product manager job description? So for example, if a product manager's uh, job description, one of the responsibilities and requirements is to manage, build relationship and manage relationship across, across um, a lot of stakeholders that are cross-functional. If the implementation specialist or the customer success give you some of those skills, that's where you, were a you would be able to tell it in a story in your resume that resonates uh, with kind of someone that's looking for a product manager once you're ready to apply for that role. So I think those could be really good. It really depends on, again, the day-to-day, -day, the skills you're getting and how those are transferred then to 
to product management. Okay, awesome. <laughs> You're welcome, Deepika. Happy, happy to help. Um, and uh, by the way, I would say uh, the other the other good way um, to start getting some of the you know I call it product uh, selling buzzwords or or experience is in looking at some certificate programs or workshop that have hands on experience that they have some projects that they work with other companies that's part of that curriculum. Because then is where you can really also tell another story of project, real projects that you've done um, that are that are sellable, that are transferable to a product management role. So looking at at workshop or certificates that have hands-on experience with companies, uh, product management ones also is a good good uh, channel for what you're. I think what you're looking for, what you ask. Um, and then I have I think time for one or two more questions. Um, Virat, how did you navigate and define your role when there was no structure for product management in Disney? Wow, that's a good, that's a good question. That's a great question. I, I would say uh, this. Um, when I came into, into Disney in the first, you know, my first basically role there, I had multiple roles there. Um, it was a lot about education. Um, it was, there's, there's things that I could control and had the discretion to do with my team. So for example, establishing a process where we create an epic value statement and each one of those, we look at it as a product team and ask the question, should we have it on the roadmap? Who is this for? What are the dependencies? Uh, that's something that I could initiate and define. And then when it started being successful, because we were much more uh, focused on why we're doing what we're doing and why we're prioritizing what we do, that had a life of its own. That kind of like did its own PR. Um, but there are some things that weren't in my discretion and control, which those are things that I had to work through education. So it's education by me introducing some of those ideas and frameworks to leaderships and to stakeholders uh, first by creating the relationship and the trust so when i do introduce them they're you know they're open to hear about it uh, two uh, i also sometimes used outside help for example i would ask to bring in outside experts uh, to bring give a lecture or give a presentation or outside consultants because sometimes bringing an outside perspective, it has a different dynamics uh, in terms of, of getting buy-in. Uh, and sometimes it was just in the sense of not outside perspective, but showing what other companies are doing and saying, if we are trying to play within this industry, let's just say technology industry, here is what the other technology companies are doing and get others, stakeholders, leadership teams connected to what others are doing and are being successful with by implementing product management roles, best practices. And least, uh, last but not least is once results show tangible results early on how customers are reacting to the fact that now you have a role of product management is also helping to keep that momentum and bring more of that credibility of why a product management role is needed. It's a lot about relationship and it's a lot about education. And uh, Deepka, yes, I am on LinkedIn, and I'm gonna I'm gonna take the the last question because I think I'm, I'm way <laughs> over over my time, uh, even though this is this is so much fun. Um, okay, so Joanne, uh, hi Liraz, would you think having a startup entrepreneur experience from business marketing side but no engineering will help the product manager role when it comes to down to breaking into product management role? Yes. Yes, I do, and I think I think uh, especially when you're mentioning a startup entrepreneur uh, in startups, especially the small one, you get to wear a lot of hats. So even if your title was more the marketing and business, I would bet that you've done product management uh, responsibilities. 
and maybe just didn't call it that way or framed it that way. So if anything, startups do allow and have the benefit of, you know, one, you do much more and titles are titles, but it's, it can be blurry um, and you wear a lot of hats. The other thing is, is startups being small and there's too much work for anyone to do, they are also more open if you start doing some of those responsibilities, even if it's not your role. You just go and you innovate and you be proactive and you start doing some of those things. You find an opportunity that where the startup needs help and maybe the product manager there needs the hand and doesn't have all the bandwidth to do it. And you start helping him and you start doing it. And that's how you you get some of those skills if you don't have those already. But I actually think uh, you know, a startup experience is a is a great experience and and one that I've seen a lot of transferable skills in terms of product managers that I've been personally interviewing for my uh, experience. Okay, so uh, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for the awesome questions and thank you for uh, coming and participating. And uh, I would say, uh, please visit the, the Best Buy booth. Um, we are hiring, we have a lot of product roles. And if, you know, I'm hoping this was helpful uh, I'm seeing from the comments that it, it was, and uh, I'm happy about that. That makes me, uh, that makes my day and probably my week. So, so thank you so much for coming and good luck uh, with your next role and with your product career journey. Uh, I wish you the best of luck uh, on that. And thank you. Bye everyone.